When I changed careers from nurse to DevOps, I barely got any replies, and honestly, that made sense. But once I figured out one simple trick, suddenly every CV I sent got a response. I realized that when I applied was more important than anything else. You see, there's actually a hidden calendar that controls when companies hire, and once you see this pattern, you'll never apply for jobs the same way again. My name is Misha and I've been in DevOps for quite a while now and I've helped hundreds of engineers land jobs through Kubecraft. But this discovery actually came from my own frustration with job searching. So the thing is that tech hiring isn't random. It has its rhythm. Then there's basically four types of months. There are peak months, building months, transition months and quiet months. Let me walk you through each month so you can see exactly what I mean. Let me start with July, because this is probably where a lot of you have experienced this frustration. July is what I call a building month, but most people think it's time to apply for jobs. And that's a huge mistake. So here's what's actually happening in July. Everyone knows July is a vacation season, right? And actually 85% of workers plan summer vacation during this time. But most engineers see this as a problem. They're like, oh, hiring managers are on vacation and that's why I'm not getting responses. But that's exactly why July is so valuable, just not for the reasons you think. In July, competition for attention is at its absolute lowest. Your LinkedIn posts get more visibility and your GitHub contributions actually get noticed. If you're building projects or updating your portfolio, people actually have the time to look at it instead of being back-to-back -back meetings all day. But here's the deeper insight that most people miss. July isn't just slow because people are on vacation. Companies are actually wrapping up Q2, their second quarter. They're planning for Q3 and they're having budget discussions. The jobs you'll see posted in September, a lot of these are actually getting approved in July. So what should you be doing in July? you should be building, researching companies you want to work for, creating projects that solve real problems, and positioning yourself for when the hiring wave hits. Your July action? Build and research. August feels like a ghost town. Most engineers get discouraged, but this is a premium relationship building time. Decision makers are most accessible in August. CTOs, engineering managers, they are not rushing between meetings. They have time for that coffee chat that you've been wanting. They have time to look at your projects and give you feedback. So you should be networking, reaching out to people at companies you want to work for. Not asking for jobs, but asking for insights. What technologies are they using and what problems are they trying to solve? This intelligence becomes gold when September hits. And I learned this the hard way. I remember a few years ago, I was frustrated because I was applying to jobs in July and August and getting nowhere. And I thought, you know what? Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I need more skills. But when I realized I was swimming upstream, I was fighting against the natural rhythm of the market. Your August action, network and gather intelligence. Then September happens and it's like a switch gets flipped. Job postings everywhere, recruiters coming out of nowhere. You've been building in July and August and you're ready. But if you're just starting in September, you're already behind. Recruiters call September the golden time for hiring. Companies realize which projects need extra people to hit year-end goals and fresh budgets get approved. Managers are back and ready to execute. But here's the thing about September, everyone knows it's good, so competition is fierce. This is why your summer preparation matters so much. While everyone else is scrambling to update their resumes, you already have your projects built that solve real problems at companies that you have researched. Your September action? Strike hard and apply aggressively. By the way, it occurred to me that only one of you are subscribed. So if you feel like doing me a favor, be a legend and hit that subscribe button. October continues its momentum, but with urgency. Hiring processes that normally take six weeks get compressed into two weeks. Why? Because managers want teams to be complete before the holidays. The unused budget needs to be spent or it disappears. October is the month of what I call panic hiring. Not because companies are desperate, but because they're strategic. They know November and December will be slow. 
so they'll be front-loading their hiring. This creates incredible opportunities for prepared candidates. Your October action is execute fast and close deals. November is when things start slowing down. As the month progresses, hiring activity decreases and some companies rush to fill critical roles. But most are already thinking about year-end wrap-up. Thanksgiving week kills all momentum. And December is the hiring desert. Job postings drop to yearly lows. But here's what most people miss. Many candidates are waiting for year-end bonuses. This creates a gap between the companies wanting to hire and the candidates wanting to wait. December is premium preparation time. People are relaxed and the holiday parties become networking gold mines. And this is when the next year's budgets gets finalized. The jobs you'll see in January, they're being planned in December. Your November, December action is to read the signals, then prepare and then network. And then January explodes. If you're not ready in January, you just missed the best wave of the year. January and February are the peak hiring months. More people get hired in these two months than any other time. Why? The fresh budgets, the new headcount approvals, and companies finalize budgets in October, November, posted jobs in December, and now want positions filled, plus the new year job mentality. People who are waiting for bonuses are now ready to move. So we're about halfway through this calendar now and you probably already see the pattern forming. It's not random, there's actually a rhythm to all of this. Your January action is to execute aggressively. February is the sustained peak. If January is the explosion, February is the productive momentum. Companies are executing Q1 hiring plans. The chaos settles into quality decisions. February is when strategic hires get made. Companies have interviewed January candidates and are ready to choose. Your February action is to choose quality, negotiate and go from strength. March and April continue strong momentum, but now fresh graduates and new grads flood the market throughout the spring. The candidate pool gets really crowded, so differentiation becomes critical. April brings real urgency. Managers feel the pressure to fill the roles because the summer vacation season begins. May becomes the last call before the cycle repeats. Companies rush to fill the critical roles before the slowdown. June is completely unpredictable. Some push, the others delay. It depends on the company. Your spring action is to differentiate and target the urgent needs. And then the cycle repeats. Now, when I first discovered this pattern, I thought, okay, this is interesting, but is it actionable? And the answer is absolutely yes, but not in the way most people think. So here's the thing. You can't network in January if you haven't built the relationships all year. You can't show projects in September if you haven't built them in July. The engineers who understand this timing don't just land the jobs. They land better jobs. They negotiate better offers because they're not desperate and they're choosing. And when I started applying this framework, everything changed. Instead of fighting the market, I started working with it. Instead of getting frustrated by quiet months, I start using them strategically. And this is actually what we teach inside Cubecraft. We don't just teach you DevOps skills, we teach you how to build projects that make this calendar work. We teach you how to network during quiet months and we teach you how to position yourself for the peak months. I wish I had known this earlier in my career. I spent so much time getting frustrated, thinking something was wrong with me and when really I was just applying at the wrong time. So let me give you some practical advice based on which month you are watching this. July, August, stop applying randomly. Start building strategically and create projects and do the research for your companies. September, October, strike hard, apply aggressively. This is the harvest time. November, read the market. Focus on companies that are still actively hiring. December, prepare for January. Update your resume and network at holiday events. January, February, execute aggressively. Move fast and negotiate from strength. March, April, continue strong momentum, but differentiate yourself from new graduates entering the market. May, target the last call critical roles before the summer slowdown. And June, adapt to transition or shift to building mode. So this is what we teach inside Cubecraft. We don't just teach DevOps skills, we teach you how to build projects that make this calendar work. We teach you how to position yourself for these peak months. I wish I had known this earlier. I spent so much time getting frustrated, 
thinking something was wrong with me, but when really I was just applying at the wrong time. So if you found this valuable, please subscribe and let me know in the comments. Have you noticed this pattern in your job search? What months gave you best results? And if you want to learn more about building the skills that make this calendar work, check out Cubecraft. We have a whole community of engineers helping each other build real world projects that land jobs. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.